The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. But the Bible also emphasizes the importance of good works and even says we will be judged of our works and receive rewards for them. Now, how are we to reconcile this? Stay tuned for an in-depth discussion of Heavenly Rewards. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. I am delighted to have as our special guest on today's program my pastor, Glenn Meredith. He is the pastor of Brookhaven Church in McKinney, Texas, and he has been the pastor of that church for over 30 years. Glenn, welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Thank you, Brother David. Well, so we're glad to have you. Joy to be here. Well, thanks. Uh, folks, I am also glad to have my colleague Nathan Jones here to help me interview. Nathan? Great to be here. Good to meet you, Pastor nice to Glenn. See you, brother. Folks, Pastor Meredith is a very gifted communicator who is able to present the depths of God's Word in simple to understand language. Last fall, he presented a sermon about heavenly rewards that deeply impressed and blessed me. And I immediately invited him to share some of his thoughts with you. So, Glenn? Let's get right into this thing right now. The Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. And I mean it says that point blank. And yet the Bible is full of passages. I think of one in Titus, for example, that talk about how important good works are and how we're going to be judged of them and how we're going to be rewarded of them. How do you reconcile that? Well, just like uh, you were saying in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it talks about very clearly without any mistake that we're saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And yet the very next verse says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works which He has before ordained that we should walk in. So the Bible is very clear to say that there's not uh, any way in the world that we could ever work our way to heaven. We couldn't in a million years do enough good works to ever merit salvation from God. It is completely and totally by His grace. He gives us the gift of eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. And when through faith we receive Jesus into our life, however, Jesus comes in in the person of the Holy Spirit and He gives us a brand new heart. He gives us a brand new nature. He transforms us. And one of the things He does is He gives us a desire to do something for Him, a desire to do good works. And so we're saved by grace, but that same grace that saves us <laughs> transforms us into people who want to work for Him. The amazing thing is that God has all these works then that He's planned for us in advance for us to do. And then an amazing thing about God is He is so good. Not only does He save us by grace, does He motivate us by grace, He empowers us by <laughs> grace. Then an amazing thing is He says, and I'll reward you for all that I'm doing through your life. So it's an amazing thing. But one of these days we'll have great rewards in heaven as we follow the Lord. You know, I found in my experience that um, most Christians have heard so much preaching about salvation by grace through faith that they are not even aware of the fact that one day we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and be judged of our works, not to determine our eternal destiny, exactly. but to determine degrees of reward. I think most people are not aware that there's a day that's coming, that, that we are going to be judged, for example, how did we use our gifts to advance the Kingdom of God? Right. I think that is so true. I think that is one of the, one of the areas where I think the devil has really just yeah. blinded the minds of, of believers. I, I think he's just lied to Christians. I can't tell you how many times I talk to Christian people and I'll uh, maybe they do something, I say, boy, great's going to be a reward. And they go into this, uh, oh, no, 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 I, 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 will, I'll, I won't be rewarded. Or I, I'm, and, and it's almost as though if they think, they think, if they think about the reward, they're not going to get a reward. Mm -hmm. they, they almost think as though that, um, that somehow uh, God doesn't want them to be motivated by the reward. Mm -hmm. And yet just the opposite is true. Over and over again, the Bible tells us that God is going to reward us. In fact, some of the last verses of the Bible. Jesus says, Behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. Yes. And so uh, God wants us to be motivated by reward. Well, 
that's, uh, I like to often put it this way, that there's good news and bad news about judgment. The good news is that we're never going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and be judged of our works to determine our eternal destiny. That Thank is never going to happen. That's right. But we are going to stand before Him and be judged of our works to determine our degrees of reward. Mm -hmm. And uh, along that line, the Bible even indicates that there may be some people who would receive no rewards whatsoever except eternal life. That's right. Isn't that right? That's exactly right. Over in it's West kind of a scary thing. First Corinthians chapter three, he talks about that uh, we'll be judged and uh, as by fire, and that our our uh, works will be judged and. Uh, those works that are deemed valuable to God, uh, illustrated by gold, silver, and precious stones, will last. And it says uh, those who have those kinds of rewards will uh, be rewarded. And then it says others who have works that are characterized or illustrated by wood, hay, and stubble, things that are worthless to God in God's sight, it says it will be burned up, but they themselves will be saved yet as by fire. Yeah, that is what a tragic kind of image of a guy being saved with his tail feathers burned. Exactly out. right, <laughs> exactly right. Made it in, but that's it. And too many Christians, I think, almost have the attitude that, well, that's all I care about. If I just make it to heaven, they think I'll be fine. Well, a lot of them are fearing the judgment of the just because they think that there's some kind of punishment. You hear exactly. a lot of people are under this impression that they're going to heaven, there'd be a giant movie screen, Absolutely. and every sin of their life is projected up there. Well, that would make heaven pornographic. Yeah. So <laughs> that, yeah. You can't have that yeah. in heaven, that's sin. Yeah. None of that. Jesus' blood covered our sins, we're forgiven. Absolutely. When we go up there, it's just a judgment for the works we did, how we responded to Jesus working through our lives. And I find so many Christians don't know that. You're exactly right. I remember one time when I was a teenager, an evangelist said that very thing. It will be a giant movie screen. Everything you've ever done will be put up there. Well, I'm telling you, I wasn't looking for it. <laughs> yeah, not at all. I may no. not want yeah. to go. I okay, thought, how now, now We've <laughs> talked here a lot about judgment and rewards, but uh, let's begin to focus uh, in a moment here now on rewards and what, what that's all about. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview with Pastor Glenn Meredith about uh, good works and eternal rewards. Pastor Glenn, you brought up Ephesians 2.10 about Christians know they have a purpose on life. God created us to do good works, but a lot of Christians don't know that there's rewards that come along with those works, the work of Jesus through us and how we respond to it. Let's share then, what are some of these rewards that people can expect in Heaven? Nathan, I think that's one of the most important uh, subjects we could talk about today because uh, I believe so many Christians are under this false impression that they're going to get to heaven one day and that everybody's going to be the same. That really no matter how you lived in this world, that we're going to get there and it's going to, heaven's going to be the same for everyone. And I think they have come to that conclusion based on really their faulty logic, certainly not on the Bible. It's almost like a person reasons within themselves, well, if if I get to heaven and someone's got more rewards than me, then, then I would be jealous. And yes. since there's not going to be jealousy mm -hmm. in heaven, then therefore we must just all be the same. <laughs> and yet the Bible is very clear that there are, there are a number of different ways that God rewards His people. So, like for, for, so for example, mm -hmm. uh, He talks about crowns. I know that there's at least five different crowns that are talked about in the Bible. We're talked about in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, it talks about what we might call the victor's crown. Yeah. Um, Paul talks about uh, in, in a race all the runners run, uh, but only one wins the prize. And he exhorts the believers, run to win the prize. And he says they do it. These runners in, in the games run to get a crown that is temporary, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. This so we're talking about an actual physical crown well, on our actual physical bodies in heaven. I think so. Okay. But, uh, so okay. We'll see. But I think it's true. So we'll be all walking around with it. I think that crown is sort of a distinction. I think we'll yeah. get to heaven, it's my opinion. I think we'll get to heaven. We'll be able to look over and say, oh, well, there's a person, the victor's crown. That person ran the race that was set before them. They ran faithfully. They, they laid aside the weights and the sin that so easily besets us. Exhibited self-control. Yeah, yeah, exhibited self-control. So the victor's crown. You have in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about the crown of rejoicing, mm. which seems to be the soul winner's crown, a crown that designates those who won people to faith in Jesus Christ. You have 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, one this ministry is certainly very uh, <laughs> familiar with when he talks about the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness, Paul says, will be given to me and to all of those 
who love His appearing. So mm -hmm. surely the staff of this Amen. wonderful ministry, <laughs> we all your partners that uh, help support this ministry, people who tune in week after week to, because they, they long for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The so Bible says. We'll be wearing multiple crowns possibly? I think possibly. They'll be stackable? Or, Absolutely. Uh, I, I, well, I, don't like have any, I have no idea. Now these but, are uh, Stephanos, not diadem, right? Exactly. Stephanos meaning they're given to us, whereas diadem means it's the ruling. God wears exactly the, correct. the diadem, but we wear the Stephanos. That's correct. Okay. That's, that's my opinion. <laughs> the, um, there's a fourth crown that uh, is talked about in the book of James, for example. It's called the crown of life. That crown is uh, given to those who have been tested and who have been tempted, and yet they've remained faithful to the Lord. Uh, Revelation talks about even faithful even unto death, and Jesus says, I will give you the crown of life. So the martyrs get a special martyrs crown. crown. Okay. And then in 1 Peter chapter 5, it talks about uh, a crown for shepherds of God's flocks. And uh, the so you'll get so a, a special crown, crown for, okay. for faithful pastors. Yeah. So you have all these different crowns, and I, I as, as you pointed out, I, I believe that certainly it would be possible for some people to be uh, living faithfully for God and winning souls, and maybe they get multiple crowns. But I imagine that we'll get to heaven one day, and that we will see these people walking, and they have these crowns on, and we'll go, well, that person won souls for Christ, and that person gave their life, the martyr's crown, for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's, there's distinctions. Besides crowns, what would they be wearing? Is there rewards based on, say, clothing, styles of clothing? I don't know. We might all ask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, well, I hear about, about white robes. You well, know, it I'm says like, wow, here that, that uh, to her, the, the, the bride of Christ, uh, is given fine linen, bright and clean, that will reflect the righteous acts of the saints. So there may be some sort of uh, emblems uh, on, on uh, robes or whatever that would indicate uh, different things that we did in service to the Lord. Uh, I just think there's, uh, we, it, it's just going to be all kinds of different awards that are going to be given out. You know, you think, uh, you think about perhaps different um, levels of glory that are somehow revealed in us. Yes. He talks about... Um, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, these light afflictions that are but for a moment are working for us in exceeding eternal weight of glory. Romans chapter 8, I reckon that the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared That's with the right. glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. Um, then you have, uh, you have the Bible teaches that we're going to reign with Christ. Yeah, a lot of people ever. write into this ministry and they're like, what are we going to be doing during the millennial kingdom? What does the Bible say as a well, reward go, yes. for believers? Some of the rewards are going to be given out before we get to the eternal state. Exactly. In yeah. the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. He said, I'll put one over one city, one over five, one over ten. So I think during the millennial reign you're going to have... Uh, Every person who is in a position of authority on planet Earth will be a person in a glorified body, and we'll be Correct. reigning over those in fleshly bodies. So every mayor, every governor, every uh, president, king, whatever, exactly. Jesus will be King of kings and Lord of lords in Jerusalem. It says that David will be uh, in his glorified body, the King of Israel. And then we're going to be scattered all over the world to reign, but we're going to have degrees of reigning authority, and that's part of the I reward. Think that's correct. And then you also add to that in, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus talked about lay up treasures in heaven. Hmm. And so you've got different degrees of treasure. First uh, Timothy chapter 6, uh, uh, Paul is exhorting those who are rich in this world, and he says, uh, exhort or command them to be generous and to be rich in good works so that they may lay up treasures in heaven which is a firm foundation for the coming age. So you've got these people in heaven one day who are going to have different crowns. They've got perhaps different uh, ways that the glory of God is revealed through them. They've got different authority that's been uh, given to them, delegated to them by the Lord Jesus Christ based on their faithfulness in this world and serving Him. You've got different amounts of treasure in heaven. And then in addition to that, this is astounding, but in, in Matthew chapter 5, for example, Jesus says that some people in the kingdom will be called least in the kingdom and others will be called great in the kingdom. Huh. And He said those who... Uh, do not obey God and who teach others to, to not obey will be called least in the kingdom. Those who obey and teach others to obey will be called great. So obviously some will be called least, some will be called great. Some have great treasure, some have little treasure or no treasure. Some have multiple crowns perhaps, some no crowns. 
So not everyone's going to be the same in heaven. There's going to be. And, and incidentally, with regard to those uh, uh, rewards I mentioned during the millennium of degrees of reigning authority, that will also carry over into the eternal state because we're told we're going to reign forever Whatever with the ever. Lord Jesus Christ. So there's going to even be degrees of reigning authority in the eternal state. That's exactly and I like what correct. you said too about the glorified bodies that will be in during the millennial kingdom. That's a form of reward that we'll have a new, it. brand new body. But to me, I think the most important is that we'll dwell with our Heavenly Father forever. Really? I mean, what a reward that God had sent His own Son to die to make that type of reward happen, to have fellowship with God like the Garden of Eden again forever. And to me, that's the best. Who cares about my <laughs> crown or not? I want to be with God yeah. forever. Well, you know, uh, another thing <clears throat> that occurs to me is that uh, the Bible teaches that when you're born again that you are in, uh, immediately given uh, not only the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit gifts you in, in a supernatural way. You get some sort of supernatural gift. It may be where you're talented. It may not be where you're talented. For example, I, I, I've seen singers who were great singers, but when they became uh, members of the Lord body, He did not gift them there. they still great singers, but they, they could get up and sing the Lord's Prayer and people applaud Somebody who's gifted gets up and sings it, and maybe doesn't sing it perfectly, but everybody's but weeping it. at the yeah, end because exactly. they're gifted by the Holy Spirit to touch right. people for Jesus. So, we're given gifts, and we may be given additional gifts as we go along. And, and how do we use those gifts to advance the kingdom? I think we're going to be judged on that. Uh, I gave you the gift of mercy. How did you use it? I gave you the gift of administration. How did you use it to advance my kingdom? And along that line, I think the Bible indicates that we're going to be judged of the quantity of our works and the quality of our works and even the motivation of our works. That's right. I can imagine some person who, world famous right now, uh, uh, maybe a, a great television evangelist, somebody who's known all over the world, and, and he stands before the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says, On the day that you uh, were born again, I gave you the gift of evangelism and you used it mightily to bring many people in the kingdom, but I knew your motivation. Mm -hmm. And your motivation was to get your picture on the front of Time Magazine, yeah. and you did. And so here's your yeah, reward, exactly. your picture of Time Magazine. Brother Dave, I believe that that is so important because I think that's where many Christians make the mistake. Yeah. When you talk to Christians about rewards, they often go, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing it for the reward. Because they think that if their motive is to do it for the reward, that that disqualifies them. Mm -hmm. They misunderstand that Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, I believe it is, he says, don't do it for the praise of men. There you go. So the wrong motive is when I'm doing these works so that people will look at me and say, well, isn't he wonderful? Then Jesus said, that's what's wrong. But he says, no, instead of praying on, in public where everybody thinks how, what a great prayer you are, go into your closet, pray in secret. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. So Jesus said, he's going to reward you. Go in there and do it. So he'll reward you. Just don't do it for the reward of men. I think we'll be in heaven and we'll be surprised how some of the, the greatest names in teaching because of the lack of improper motive or, or whatnot creates a, a small crown whereas the little old lady no one knew about who filled the communion cups every weekend diligently will go. probably be staggering around heaven Absolutely. with this massive crown. Absolutely. <laughs> Jesus we'll be surprised. Even says, he even says <laughs> that uh, on that day the least will be first and or the, the last will be first, the first will be last. Well, it's and one I of the reasons exactly that I teach right. very strongly that people need to find out what their spiritual gifts are. And there's many ways to do that. I mean, you can study the Word. You can talk to people who know you. You can talk to your pastor. You can take spiritual gifts inventory tests and so to help, help you find out what are your gifts and use them to advance the kingdom. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, then I know from the uh, sermon that I heard you give that stirred me so much, the part of it that, that really challenged me was the last part where you began to talk about, will these crowns be temporary, handed to you and you just... That, hand them back and that's it? Or will they be something that will be eternal in nature? So in just a moment I want to come back and discuss that. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy with our interview of Pastor Glenn Meredith on Heavenly Rewards. Well Glenn I, I want to kick off this section by just saying to you that the most fascinating part of your presentation that Sunday I heard you talk about Heavenly Rewards was the last section where you talked about whether or not these rewards would be something uh, temporary or permanent. And the traditional teaching has always been that the rewards are very temporary, that you receive them, you put them back at the feet of Jesus to honor Him and that's it, you walk away and that, that's the end of the rewards. Uh, based I think primarily upon uh, one uh, uh, scene in the book of Revelation chapter 4 where it shows some uh, fellows in Heaven who have some golden crowns and they put them at the feet of Jesus. 
So uh, you didn't share that uh, view of it that being temporary in nature, and that was uh, really got me to thinking. So I want you to share what with us your thinking about that. Well, I, and that that had always sort of been my uh, understanding. It's certainly what I was taught, or at least what I kind of picked up through the years, was that we would. Uh, get these crowns, perhaps, if, if we had lived uh, faithfully, uh, we would be given a crown, perhaps, at the judgment seat. But then very shortly thereafter, uh, there would be this great worship service there in heaven. We'd take off the crown, we'd cast it at the feet of Jesus, and uh, then from that point on, everything is just the same. We've got, you know, nothing else. Well, as I was uh, reading one day, I'm, I'm looking, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where Paul is exhorting uh, the Corinthians and believers to run this race to win this crown. And he says to them that the runners who run in the games run to get a crown that is temporary. Mm. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And so, well, it seems a little strange that his whole point there is don't run for this temporary crown. Well, if our crown, even our heavenly crown were temporary, then that takes away some of the motivation, I think, of, of why we should strive for it. But Paul says the opposite. He says, I think that, he says, you ought to run uh, for this crown that will last forever. You get over to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and he talks about the, uh, the crown of glory that's given to uh, faithful pastors and shepherds of the flock. And it says, when the chief shepherd shall appear, he will bring with him and give to you an unfading crown of glory. That word unfading, it, it really means perpetual or or forever. And it's it's the same um, word that's used uh, earlier in, in 1 Peter where he's talking about our inheritance in heaven that is unfading and it's imperishable. Uh, and so I believe that the rewards are going to be permanent. I believe, as, as you've already pointed out, that this authority that we're given uh, to rule and reign is both in the millennial kingdom, but he also says that we will reign with him forever and ever. And so I believe that this authority is uh, permanent. What is wonderful to me is to think about the fact that we will have, as it puts it, the, the mind of Christ. I'm not sure what all that means. That's, that's a mighty big statement. But it says we're going to have the mind of Christ. We'll be in glorified bodies. And that we will be in such a state that we will not be the least bit jealous, envious of any other person's crown or any glory that's given to them. Instead we would want to go on up and hug them and say, oh I am exactly. so glad that you, it is so wonderful that you did all these wonderful things for the, the advancement of the Kingdom. Isn't that wonderful to think of having an existence like that? Exactly. Well you think about how do you feel when your children or when someone that you love excels or does something that is honored. You're happy for them. Well, I think that's how it's going to be in eternity. We're going to love one another there. We're all part of the same family, and uh, we're going to love one another there. And I think that's exactly right. I believe rather than being jealous, I yeah. think we're going to look and say, man, I am just so blessed by you. <laughs> well, I think in our fallen state, though, right now, yeah. it's hard yeah. to imagine that. You yeah. know, it's just, oh, man, correct. I'm just going to be consumed with jealousy and envy. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> There's a beautiful scene in the movie Chronicles of Narnia. And I think C.S. Lewis believes what you do, that these crowns you, you keep, you, you use them as acts of worship, you take them off and bow before the Lord, but then you put them back on. But there's one scene where the four children each get a crown and they each get an area to rule and they're beautiful crowns. They did such a good job in the movie. But you see them put them on again throughout mm -hmm. what's remainder of the movie and we will continue to, because we're, we're all living examples of God's workmanship through us for eternal. We, know we don't get it and then just give it to them, but that forever we are praising God based on the works that we did here. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a heavy burden to, to bear, but it's mm -hmm. also a wonderful burden. And I really think what it all boils down to it therefore that, that really what God says is it really matters how we live our life now. Yes, amen. And too many Christians I believe are just sort of uh, just sort of passing through this world and not really intentionally trying to make a difference in the world. They're not using those spiritual gifts that God has given to them. They're not taking advantage of the opportunities that God uh, lays before them. Mm -hmm. And so it is really important. We get such a brief time. This life that we live is like a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away, and yet it has eternal ramifications. Not just where we're going to spend eternity, but really what our eternity is going to be like, the reward that we will have, and the, I believe the service that we'll be able to perform for Christ there is all dependent upon how we live right now. 
Well, I, I'm glad to hear you say that because I was going to ask you to wrap up this particular section by saying, well, now what is the message? Well, you just gave the message. The message basically is that once you begin to believe in what the Bible really says about rewards and what it really says about good works, uh, you begin to be motivated even more than, than ever before to really get serious about being a more than just a back pew Christian who sits there and absorbs and never does anything for the exactly advancement right. of God. Exactly right. Well, that is a tremendous message, and I appreciate you sharing it with us. Thank you. I remember the day that you delivered it, I just got so excited. And, <laughs> and, and then I, I, wanted, I wanted to put that together in a video album and found out that the camera didn't work That's right exactly there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, well, what we're going to do, though, is, is we're going to uh, tell people in a few minutes how they can get a copy of, of this uh, particular item, which is entitled Heaven its nature and its meaning. And it contains three programs that we did about uh, Heaven that people have always been enthralled by, particularly one of them in there, Will Your Pet Be in Heaven? And yes. we go into great <laughs> detail about what all the Bible has to say about that, and, and people just love to, to watch that program. In fact, we have pets on the program. We even have a cat, and I, I don't care for cats too much, <laughs> but we had a cat so that the cat lovers would be happy as well as the dog lovers. <laughs> Uh, so, we'll be telling people in a few minutes how to get a copy of that. Well, Glenn, I want to thank you so much for being our special guest. You've really been a blessing to us. Well, thank you, brother. And uh, I thank you for having me here today. It's so nice to get to meet you and your staff. And I would like to just take a moment to say to your viewers uh, what a blessing you have been to me, my family, and our church that God led you and your sweet wife to join our church. And uh, sometimes people who watch uh, programs like this, they don't get to be <laughs> with the, the people up close and personal. And I just want to say to your people, He is the real deal. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Praise the Lord. How, how can people get in touch with you? You mind looking at that camera and sure. let them know? Uh, you can contact me at uh, our website at www.brookhavenchurch.com. And uh, you can get in touch with us there. All of our contact information is there on the website. Well, once again, I want to mention the video that we're going to tell you how to get in touch with, uh, uh, how to get a copy of. And it is uh, one that I'm sure a lot of people really need to watch because most people think of heaven as an ethereal place, disembodied spirits, floating around in a cloud playing a harp, worshiping forever, nothing very interesting to do. And this says, no, it's for real. Uh, we're going to have bodies, we're going to have crowns, we're going to have meaningful things to do. And so I encourage people to find out what heaven's really going to be like according to the Word of God. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope you will be back with us next week, the Lord willing. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for myself and Nathan Jones saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. For detailed information about heaven, you need to get a copy of Dr. Reagan's video titled, Heaven, Its Nature and Meaning. As Dr. Reagan presents what the Bible says about heaven in this 75-minute video presentation, he's assisted by two colleagues, Dennis Pollock of Spirit of Grace Ministries and Don McGee of Crown and Sickle Ministries. These three men will challenge you to think about heaven in ways you have never considered. Divided into three parts, the first part introduces what the Bible says about the nature and meaning of heaven. The second part focuses on the question of whether or not our pets will be in heaven. The final section features the commonly asked questions. You will find the section about pets to be particularly entertaining as Dr. Reagan interviews three dogs and a cat. Another very special feature is two great songs by Jack Hollingsworth of Acts 29 Ministries. You can secure a copy of this video for a gift of $12 or more, plus shipping. Just call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or order online at lamblion.com. Lamb and Lion Ministries is a faith ministry that depends upon your donations to pay our broadcast costs. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.